Hello and welcome to Love Revolution. I'm your host, Mia Sines. And in this segment with me sitting right next to me is Amber Bonici. Now, Amber lives in Hawaii, very Hawaiian, very sensual, and she's going to also share her... Um, she's so funny. She's also going to share her um, Hawaiian name with us because I'm going to practice it so I can say it right next time. And Amber is an amazing mentor for women. She really is an activist. And... Um, through her love and her teachings and her, she teaches art as well. Um, I've blossomed in ways in which um, I didn't know that I could. And so I'm very grateful. I love her. She also has this um, behind the scenes classroom for her work um, called the Red Thread Classroom. And it's really brilliant. The people in there just respond so amazing to her. You just, you guys are going to love her. She's, she's awesome. So I can go on and on and on, and we can play here, but I'm going to introduce you to her because she has a lot of stuff to share and to show you, and most of you have already gotten a glimpse of her in the pre, um, not just her interviewing me, but also she did, an, which was so lovely, she did a video for us on creating our journals for this series, so ta da 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 here's Amber, everybody. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm giving myself self love. I'm so awesome. <laughs> you are. Thanks, babes. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, love sharing art, and I love, I love. See, can you share your journal with us? Yes. We, we I had to talk, really. Okay. I did this from did it, everybody from the um from the information that Amber gave us. I did this. I did this. Plus, I also watched her retreat and all that but I did this <laughs> so awesome you know what makes me so excited um, Mia is that it's not this is this part isn't in my bio so people don't really know it much but I never considered myself an artist growing up I always considered myself like there are people that can draw things really well and when I was younger I thought I don't have that talent and so I'm not I'm not an artist even though I enjoy doing it so I stopped like 10 years old I remember like not taking art classes anymore, totally going the band room, right? Mm -hmm. Music, and because I was gifted at that. I thought I was gifted, the whole gifted thing, right? right? And then about five years ago, in my 30s, um, I was like, I remember reading a book called The Gift of a Year, where you gave yourself one thing to do for a year. And um, I was a mom of two really young, I had like a two-year-old and like a zero-year-old, and I was like, crazy. And uh, I needed something for me, and I and painting popped up, and I thought that is so weird. I don't paint, you know. That was my thing. I'm not creative. I don't paint. That was my story. And then I was like, I don't even know. And the very next day, in my email box, popped this email saying, uh, talking about a writing and painting mentorship. I was like, oh, it's like the heavens, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, my journey started there. So I adore. Anyone, um, all women who are in this feeling of I'm not creative or I don't know how to do that or that's not my thing. Um, like I love unleashing the creativity within people. So they're like, look at this. This is amazing. I did this. And it's like, yes, you did. Mm -hmm. We all can do that. So it's my passion. That's wonderful. And you do it very well, both painting and your passion and inspiring people. So. Thank it's, you. It's been forever since I've drawn or painted, and so um, when you did this, I I wanted to do. Do you have your journal? Yeah, well, I have I, several. I, I wanted to do. She has this one with with a beautiful painted face on it. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. So right. I'm I'm looking for my supplies, and I yeah, it's, it's amazing. And I and I, but I couldn't find the right journal to do that, and I couldn't find the right supplies, and I just thought, okay, I'm not technical enough yet. So I knew, then I started thinking, oh, I could draw a woman and a bird. And, you know, so, and I love them together. They're amazing. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I love them too. They are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, this that is one thing that stops us. Not just, I find that art, like creativity and life are, just like anything, go hand in hand. If we are thinking when I'm, like if I'm sitting in front of my canvas and I'm like, oh, I can't do that or that's, that doesn't look right or um, I'm not good at that, then I look at, from my perspective, I'm like, well, where, where am I having that same conversation in my life? 
right? Where am I being hard on myself? Where am I thinking that I'm not good enough to do things? And I tell you, that perfectionist side, like she will stop us from doing things we love and things that we are wishing and waiting and wanting. Like she will stop us because we want to be perfect and right and look pretty. And sometimes we have to go through the ugly to get to the pretty, so. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. Go through the ugly to get to the pretty. And that not that really true about everything in life? About self-discovery, about our self-love stuff, about painting, about becoming a chef, you know, learning to cook well, to anything. Any, any new thing, we have to go through the ugly to get to the pretty. I love that. I find that there's like this myth that I'm hearing a lot that talks about like how, oh, we should just be in flow all the time and everything should be so easy if we're really following our purpose. And um, and I don't necessarily believe that. I sometimes believe our callings, like there's like, we have to like get through some tough stuff to like kind of get strong enough to be able to hold the container for mission or vision or things that are coming. Like I think of like Mother Teresa for example, even though she felt this calling, it's like, do you think that she, you know, loved, like, like getting in it and get, you know, that, like, it was hard work sometimes, you know, raising money, getting that stuff going. And um, so I just want, this is like my encouragement to you, is if you have something that you want to do and if you're feeling like you're in the tough spot, like, think of it a bit like birth. Like, you're in the childbirth, the, the transition part when the women are like, no, like, <laughs> why? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't. I, t I changed my mind. I don't want to have a baby anymore. Right? That we hit that birthing, that mm, that birthing point when we're birthing our creations. So I want to encourage you if you're in that point, like bear down, ladies. Like, mm. Do, does every woman go through that like me at six months? Wait a minute, I changed my mind. <laughs> oh my gosh, I so did that too with my it was with my second, my first one. I was like, oh, oh yay, but then my second one it was around six months. I was like. I rem like I somehow remember childbirth again. I was like, wait, why did I decide to do this again? At this point, it was like I can't like go back. And... Yeah. So um, I found like one thing that we could do today is I really want to help women unleash their creativity here. So whether women are like they have they're just they don't have any sort of creativity. They're like I'm not creative. Whether you're on that side of the spectrum. Or whether you're a super technical artist and you are, um, you're stuck because technique can be empowering because we have tools and things to do, but it can also get really dry and very like, I'm doing it just like everybody else because I am a robot, right? So um, to kind of add some juiciness in there. So I thought that we could get a little creativity going and noticing that creativity isn't just like painting, paper, journal, that kind of stuff, but creativity is in everything we do like to bring this energy up this is what creates change this is what makes things move in our world and so to bring that energy up um, so you can use it sound good awesome, awesome. yes yay I'm excited so um, one thing we talked about briefly is like going through the ugly to get to the pretty so um, one thing I'm going to have you do is we're going to let go of the critic, right? That perfectionist part of ourselves during this process. So like for the next, I don't know, we have 15 minutes left. Just for these 15 minutes, I want you just to like set her aside. So we're going to draw her. No need to be a Picasso here. Although Picasso, his line drawings are like pretty lame. I mean, like, you know, they look like a kid. So, you know, you might be, your drawing might look like Picasso. But I'm going to show you something. You can follow me or do your own your own stuff. Oops, sorry. Come with me. Do, 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 do. All right, ladies. Or if we have gentlemen here, I love you too. Okay, so we're going to just draw your person. Doesn't have to be hard. You can do like a circle for a head. Here we go. I got her arms. And she's got some hips. And actually, mine's a little bit bossy, so she's going to put her hands on her hips. Like, me, 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 me. Like, that doesn't just look right. La, 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 la. She's got wild hair because you might not know it because I've got my hair all back, but this is what my hair normally looks like. She's unhappy. Meow. Okay. She's got her little eyes, eyebrows. Oh, we'll give her a nose. Ta-da! Ta-da! 
Here's my lady who's bossy. Okay? So she needs a little bit of a vacation. You know, sometimes we all just need a vacation. Doesn't she sound like she needs a vacation? She if yours sounds anything like mine, she does. So you're actually going to rip her out of your journal. Ah, oh, no, the perfectionist in you is saying, don't rip it out of the journal. You're going to have a jagged end in your journal. Don't worry about it, ladies. Boom. Here she goes. All right. Why are we ripping her out of the journal? Because we're making her life size? No. No, because I tell because oh. you're going ahead, Mia. Stop it. Okay. I'm telling you where she's going. Okay, <laughs> she's gonna go on a journey. So where do you want to send her? Okay. So you can send her to go have a cup of tea. Like I've got a teacup over here. Like she can go over there. Here. Here's my teacup. She can go have a cup of tea. Or mine, she's just feeling a little bit tired, you know. So I think I'm gonna get let her go to sleep. So Right here, I've got on my altar table, I've got like this lady, she's sleeping here. And so she's gonna go sleep over here with my friend, get a little R&R, &R, okay? So find a spot, like right now, get up and find a spot for your person. You can like put her next to a seashell, she needs to go to the ocean. Uh, maybe she needs, I don't know, what, what are some ideas? Do you have any ideas, Mia? I have There's seashells one. for the ocean, or you could take her up to the mountains. Here's some of my beautiful, you know, you have them too, everybody. Beautiful. Um, I keep these right near me, these crystals. Very powerful. Um, or you could have her go to a campfire, like, like my beautiful candle. You know, we can be really creative. And that's, isn't that fun? You just, you just burned the little girl in me. <laughs> Yay. I know, right? So, yeah, that's the part of you that say, this is stupid. Why are we doing this? Remember, she, we just sent her somewhere, okay? Right. So let her go. <laughs> so for these next, this, this time that we have together, we're just, I this is what I do whenever I paint, is I actually have a critic-free zone in my studio space where in this room she is not allowed. And if I start to catch her, if I start to notice her, I'm like, oh, honey, remember you're supposed to be outside. You know, so I start to have this dialogue um, so that it's more fun, so that I allow space for creativity. Because the critic and the muse, they don't really get along so well, you know? It's like, you might have noticed this before if you've drawn and you're feeling like, even well, everyone knows this, even if you are a seasoned professional artist or whether you're like, you, you, you're, you're not creative, right? That when you start to feel like, oh, this doesn't look good, like all your creativity is like zoom, zapped out. Like the inspiration just goes with, that negativity so we're just gonna care for her right now and then we're gonna be creative sounds fine yep let's do it okay so one thing I want you to do is just wherever you're seated or if you want to stand up a little bit with me if you can if you want so um, part of creativity if you're looking at you know your chakras if you believe in the chakra system um, or even just energy our creation energy birthing energy we've been talking about um, we just talked about childbirth is in our womb space, right? Whether you're a mother or whether you're not a mother, this is like your creative juices are, are from this space, right? Creation, creation. So I'm just going to get up. You can sit down if you want to. But I want you just to put your hands on your womb space, your belly, and just let yourself move a little bit, okay? This is, we're activating, moving some energy. Your, your bowl is like a pelvis no your pelvis is like a bowl <laughs> and as you walk this energy moves up right so if you're sitting there just let yourself find these micro movements to start to kind of allow that energy to move okay all right so next thing we're going to do is i want us to actually I want you to have an experience of an awakening, awakening of what this creative muse essence feels like and what she can do for you. So we're just going to do a short little visualization. We're going to go on a journey together. Okay, so be sure and have your journal, your pens, your stuff that you're ready. And, uh, and then let's go ahead and go on a journey. We're going on a journey. <laughs> and I'm having so much fun over here. Yay! <laughs> Okay, so ladies, go ahead and close your eyes. Get yourself comfortable. Move that bowl around so you find a spot that feels good for you. 
And go ahead, I want you to take a few deep breaths. And each time that you exhale, I want you to imagine sinking more and more into wherever you're sitting, surrendering into your chair, letting yourself be supported underneath. And I want you to imagine as you're breathing also, I want you to imagine actually like slowly walking down a spiral staircase from the top of your head. We're starting here in your head and walking down, down, down the staircase. You're walking and you're passing your throat. Keep walking. You're going to pass your heart. And continue moving down. Moving all the way down until you get to your pelvis, to your bowl, to the center of your being, your Dantian, your Hara. And I want you to imagine a great doorway in front of you. And this doorway, actually, you can feel like on the other side of the doorway, there's something really important there for you. Go up to the doorway, and I want you to run your hands over it. What is it made out of? Look around your doorway and notice if there's any inscriptions around it. Is there a message for you here? And when you're ready, knowing that on the other side, you're going to find something, something you've been looking for. You slowly push the door open, and on the other side is a nice warm space, but it's really dark, like a cave. But somehow you're able, there's enough light so you're able to see. And so you walk into this cave letting your hands run along the sides of the wall and you can hear a trickling of water so that you know that you're close to a stream. You continue walking and the sound of water gets a little bit louder. And you're able to see a little bit more. And you can see ahead of you is a big cavern. So you walk out until you reach this cavern. And you see the stream running past you. And look around the cavern, noticing what's there. Are there rocks or crystals? Is it smooth? You decide to follow the stream, but instead of following it where it's headed, out, you're following it up. So you follow up the stream bed, back and deeper into the cave. And you get to one waterfall, and it looks beautiful but you know you want to continue. So you find some places and handholds and footholds and you slowly pull yourself up bit by bit up that face of the wall next to the waterfall. And 
and climbing up to the top. And when you get to the top, you notice a beautiful lake. And the lake has a color emanating from it, deep within, almost like it's lit from underneath. Notice the color. Once you walk over to the edge of this pool, and from the corner of your eye, you see someone walking towards you. This is your muse, your inner self who loves creativity. Notice what she's wearing and what she looks like. She walks up to you and she says, it's time. It's time for you to unleash your creativity and to awaken me. So she tells you, you're going to need to go into the pool and let yourself leave behind any doubts, any feelings like you can't, all of those you're going to wash them right off. And so slowly you move into the pool step by step. And as you step into this water, you start to feel yourself awakening, feeling your cells waking up. Let yourself get into the water and then you let yourself dunk all the way down under the water and come back up. And she looks at you from the side, from the shore, and she says two more times, release everything. So you let yourself again sink down into the water Coming back up, taking a breath. And this time is going to seal it for you. Again, one more time. Deep breath and then back into the water. And when you come out, you notice she's no longer on the shoreline. You come out of the water bit by bit and you feel alive you feel free and as you stand next to the pool next to that pond the ripples slowly come back to stillness and as you look at your reflection, you notice that it is you and her. And so, now you are ready. So you sit, find a spot next to your pool, sit, and Taking a few deep breaths, knowing that you have what you need and you're ready to come back. When you're ready, slowly opening your eyes. Hmm. I want you to take your journal and just first write some of your experience, what happened. You can also um, do any drawing if there was anything that came to you. Just let it flow.
you can go ahead and keep um, drawing and journaling what came to you. But what I would love for you to do is using just a simple guide of your person is I want you to draw a little bit about what they looked like. Okay, so again, letting go of anything you is holding you back. I'm going to show you just a basic body. Kind of, actually, we did one already, but super simple here. Head. You can do neck, shoulders, or just shoulders. You can continue drawing her, but then what, what the last thing I'm going to have you do is to imagine putting the pen, your pen, in her hand. Okay? Imagining that she's holding this pen and let her write to you all around this picture of her. This was fun. My, I know. My little guy, my little girl is really cute. Okay. So what I want you to do is to um, just notice, I'm going to show you what I got going here. So I've got, this is what I asked you to do, is to first just write some of your experience about whatever you noticed, what came up for you, like things that you're like, wow, I, it looked like this, things like that. And then I want you to, you know, whatever that message was for you, and then going over and drawing your person. I remember my person had like crazy hair. She had like red hair. She had yellow hair. She didn't care what people thought. And when I put the pen in her hand, she told me like, you know, we need this energy to create change. That was one thing she told me is like that in order to create change, to burst something new, like it's this energy that we need in order to do that. Um, Mia, what did, what, share what you have. Okay. Um, well, first of all, when we went through the meditation, and I saw, I saw her. It's the same woman that I. You took me through meditation once before, and it's the same me. It's just she's got white hair. So the drawing isn't that, but I wrote what what came to me on some paper that I had already colored. And then what like, keeps coming to me in this one as it did in the last one was Yin and Yang, that we are together, that she's my other side, and so I'm truly my own muse. I can create. So I did a little yin and yang heart, which which I thought was <laughs> wild. And then on the other page, I did the, um, you know, when we did the, the uh, grumpy girl and we tore, we were supposed to tear out. I was disobedient. I didn't tear her out. <laughs> but I did bring, I was, and I have to finish doing it later, but I was bringing her this piece of um, this from the ocean in Miami, this piece of um, shell sea creature thing. And so I was creating it down here for her. But then, after the whole process, the happy one came out. And so here she is vibrating with love. <laughs> I know I'm like a little girl with this, but <laughs> it's okay. That is the point, is that um, I feel like when we tap into this energy, it's like, it feels that way. We feel bubbly. We feel excited. We feel like, ah, you know, there's like this, this little happy thing. And we've been mashing that energy. We've been like stuffing it. We've been 
saying, saying it's not okay to feel that way. It's not okay to go there. And so there's this untapped resource that we all have. And so that's, that's what this is about. It's about you recognizing that you are that muse. You are whoever you saw. You have gone through something where that you are like, okay, now I can be that way. Like, don't let this moment, this moment can be a changing moment for, for, I'm speaking to all of you. It can be a changing moment for you that you, from this moment forward, recognize your creativity and you use it in order to create the ch and change that you want to make in the world. So, mm. awesome. so I this was I love this. I cannot wait to see. I want to see in the group. I want to see pictures. I'm a visual person. Share with me, you know, your experience. I would love to hear see all that stuff. Yeah, so. it'd be awesome. Thank you so much. You're amazing. I just adore you. Yes, I love you too. Now, you have a free gift for us. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Would you like to share it? I would. Good. So my gift is its called Art for the Heart. And it originally was a four, like a mini retreats, four mini retreats. And what we do is we do painting. Um, so if you're totally fresh and you've never painted before, all good. Got you covered step by step exactly what to do. We do painting, poetry, we do movement, um, and we do some grounding. So it's all about if you just need a little dose, like we're doing the retreat now, but so it's like extra, 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 read awesome. all about it. And um, what I love about this is it's for people who have never painted before. You can totally do this. And also people who are creative, who are artistic. It's a very different process. It's not technique based. It's not like outside based. It's what we did. It's internal coming out and seeing what comes from there. And um, it's normally we valued it at $249. That's what it sold for before. But this is my gift to you because yeah. I want this creative being to keep coming keep coming awesome thank yeah. you that's wonderful i just feel like i'm a kid again yay <laughs> and i always do when we do this art stuff i love it thank you i know well isn't it funny because kids there you don't meet any small kids that if you give them a crayon and paper they're not like totally thrilled right there's a point when 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 our critic friend starts to come in and it's around you know nine, ten years old. And we see that. And if you have kids, you've seen it too with their creativity. So yeah. let's just keep creating, ladies. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us. It was really a pleasure. You it's betcha. Wonderful. I love you. And I'm sending much, much aloha to everyone. And you remember, so you can either either bring your, um, you know, she might come back. You might want to bring her back with you. Or you might want to leave her outside. Or you know, you get to choose. So now that our creativity session is over, you can bring your perfectionist back because she does have something she helps with. That's right. <laughs> thank you so much, honey. And thank you all for joining us. We'll see you in another segment.